Chuck. Yes. I have a like an urgent explainer. Uh oh. <laughs> urgent. Urgent. <laughs> what did you do now? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. There's a green comet in the sky, and people have been asking questions about it. Yeah. So I thought well, let, let's pop this explainer out there just so we can so settle we can some settle some green comet issues. Issues. That's correct. That's not to correct. be confused with the green hornet. No, not to be confused at all with the Green Hornet. Who, by the way, was not cool at all. Cato was really the cool one. Oh, of course. I yeah. only watched it for Cato. Yeah, Bruce everybody Lee. watched right. it for Cato. Green Hornet was just a white guy with a Lincoln. <laughs> Lincoln gun. That's all. It's it was like it was a white dude with a nice Lincoln whip. <laughs> Right, and and and, and Bruce but the Asian Lee, guy that could kick your ass—that was right. where the action was. Bruce Lee was really where all the action was, man. I don't care about your green ring. Exactly. Let me let me let me roundhouse you in the face. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, this comet was discovered last year. Okay. And by the way, for what it's worth, in case you didn't know, we discover hundreds of comets a year. All right, and and in some cases, depending on which telescopes are tasked to it. In some cases, it could even be thousands. So the act of discovering a comet is not itself extraordinary. Okay. Just make that clear. Right. Most of those comets never get bright enough to be visible to the unaided eye. Gotcha. You need telescopes, and you have to know where to look. And okay. since they're moving, you have to know where to look today versus yesterday, which is going to be different from where you have to look tomorrow. Right. So this one in particular, based on its trajectory, based on how bright it has been for the past few months, because it's headed doing this deep loop orbit around the sun, uh -huh. crossing Earth's orbit to do that. Okay. So this comet, as it descends towards the sun, as you know, as you may know, the heat from the sun, uh, uh -huh. it will it will evaporate the ice. Right. right. The technical word there is sub, it subliminates the ice because evaporate is what we would say if liquid turns to gas. But if you go from solid to gas, it's called sublimation. That's what's happening with the comet. We all know sublimation, that's what dry ice does. Right. So, you have a comet that's coming in. It was unknown before. So last year, was, it was discovered. So there's no record of it ever having come before. When you look at its orbit, we find out that its orbit is 50,000 years around the sun. So. 50? No, nope, caveman was not checking this out. Wow. Okay. All right. Now, wait, so the sun's gravity, is that uh, heavy? That it's, it's badass. No, sun's gravity goes well beyond Damn. Neptune, the last planet from the sun. Right. Get over it. Yeah, okay. I was, <laughs> it goes well I was about to say, I was, when you said the last planet, I was like, damn, he did it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, so it goes well beyond Neptune. It goes into the Kuiper belt right. of comets. Right. All right. And where Pluto is a member, one of the prominent members of the Kuiper belt of comets. And, and then beyond that, there is a, repo a spherical repository of frozen objects, comets, that goes practically halfway out to the nearest star. Wow. This, is, this was predicted to be there by a Dutch astronomer named Jan Oort, and it's called the Oort, Oort cloud. cloud. Oh. The Oort Cloud. Cool. So this comet comes to us from the Oort Cloud. Wow. And any comet that comes to us from the Oort Cloud has never been seen in, the, in civilization. All right. Because so that's, how, that's how long those trajectories take. Okay, so here's what I got to ask. Because you said that it was bright. No, I didn't say it was bright. I said it was, it was bright enough so that it might be visible to the unaided eye. That's why it's making the news. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so, I saw a headline. Just to show you how, how wishful we are, the headline in a major news outlet said, a new bright comet is discovered. It may be visible to the unaided eye. That's <laughs> funny. <I> <laughs> No. <laughs> Can we have truth in advertising here, please? That's right, yeah. All yeah. right. It's definitely visible in telescopes right now, and it has already come past the sun, so it's already at its own intrinsic brightest, but now it's going to work its way back out of the solar system, and it'll come closer towards Earth. So after it dips around the sun, it'll be best viewed in our northern skies, in the last week of January, as okay. it 
passes by the North Star. Okay, All right. Just coincidentally. And North, North Star, which itself is not particularly bright, but you can always find it by looking at the much brighter stars that comprise the Big Dipper, and the lip of the Big Dipper points, oh. points, points approximately to the North Star. So that's how you define it. So, so if you look up with your eyes and you don't see it, it's because the comet is not as bright as the headlines are telling you. And binoculars are good. You can sort of scan the sky with binoculars. Okay. But what's good about that last week of, of January is that the moon will not be competing in brightness with that comet in the sky. and Because the moon could just wreak Blow havoc, it out? But totally blows it out. Totally nice. blows it out. I like so that. So the moon is not the stargazer's friend at all. Unless you're looking at the moon itself. Yeah. All right. And then that's all you're going to be looking at because nothing the, else is, is good. The moon is d jealous. Yeah. So why, so why is it green? Well, we can spectroscopically analyze the comet, put the light through, it, through, through a prism, through a, a version of a prism, and you see all the chemistry that's going on. Mm -hmm. And we know that there are a couple of ways you can get green. One of them is from the molecule cyanogen. All right. Cyan, CN, basically. Cyanogen. And did you know that cyanogen is poisonous? I, you know, I was about to say, I heard, I hear cyanide and cyanogen. No, yeah, they're related. They're related. There's like CN is an active uh, part of the larger molecule that's cyanide. Right. Uh, it's hydrogen cyanide is the, is the full molecule there. But CN is poisonous, okay? Okay. Do you know... Th that the first time we detected cyanogen in a comet was for Halley's Comet in 1910. And let me guess, the person who looked up at it through the telescope dropped dead, and we were <laughs> like, ooh, that is well, a poisonous comet. <laughs> here it is. We, we got the spectra of it. This got announced. People lost their shit. Okay, people, people, because we were, we were also projected to pass through the tail of oh. Halley's Comet oh, nice. in 1910, and there were headlines. God just poisoned the world. Headline <laughs> saying end of the world is coming, and so people started selling anti-comet pills. Oh, that's amazing. They're, they're these, these little vials. Take this to protect you from the poisonous oh. gases of the comet. Others had um, uh, umbrella protection. They'd sell you anti-comet umbrellas wow I mean, it was it was like oh my gosh you you think the movie don't look up had crazy social public phenomena going on in it you go back to 1910 because everyone was anticipating Halley's Comet because it was the most famous of all comets and it just takes a 76 year path hardly anyone alive then saw it in its previous uh, right, voyage right. If nobody lived very long. Yeah, longer. back then, yeah. Back then, not many yeah, people. Yeah, 36 lived was like ancient. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you a 55 year old man, we're getting the wheelchair for you. Exactly. So, point is, cyanogen has this fascinating history with Halley's Comet from 1910. Nice. And here's another weird thing about comets. In 1910, there was another comet that came out in January that was brighter than Halley's Comet. Okay, another one of these sort of once in a, in a uh, it was probably also from the Oort cloud. Halley's Comet is not from the Oort cloud. It comes around, like I said, every 76, 76 years. or so years. When you come in from the Oort cloud, nobody saw you before. You just show up. And it was really bright. Many people who believed they were remembering Halley's Comet, telling stories about 1910, were giving accounts of that other comet based on how they described it. Right. So that other comet supplanted many people's memories for what they uh, think they were seeing back in 1910. I got you. Kind of, kind of, kind of like um, you know, every, uh, um, every eyewitness to a black man committing a crime. <laughs> Stop <laughs> Why is everything got to be about police and black folk to you? Because I live in America. That's why. <laughs> Stop. Okay, can we get back uh, to right, comets back, now, back please? Comet. Back to the comet. Okay. Sorry. Right. So, since comets are just these 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 aggregations of ice of very of many different kinds, it's water ice, ammonia ice, uh, CO two ice, which is dry ice, uh, more commonly called. So, as it nears the sun, it's tumbling and it's heated, and it's very hard to predict how visible it will get. 
because the visibility relates to how much gas sublimates off the comet. Oh. Because then the gas will do two things. It can fluoresce mm -hmm. in the high energy light of the sun, but it can also reflect light. And most of the tail that you see of a comet is reflected light. Right. And so the more gas evaporates, the more it can reflect light and the more visible it becomes. So the more flatulent the comet is. Did I use that? Did, did I? Did, did. No, I'm just saying. It just sounds like, you know, you got a comet. Had, had a very aggressive lunch. <laughs> <laughs> now, another, another fact, okay, is the gases that evaporate and form what we call the tail, the pressure from sunlight pushes the tail in the opposite direction of wherever the sun is at all times. Okay. Okay. So when a comet comes in towards the sun... We can think of that as an authentic tail because it's trailing the comet. Right. But on its way out from the sun, it exits tail first. Wow. Okay, so tail is a little bit of a misnomer. Gotcha. Okay? Gotcha. Right. Uh, oh, oh my God, yes, because when we think of a tail here, we think of it because there's an air current that creates a tail. But because you're moving because you're through moving the through the air. Yeah. But there is no air in space. No air. No air. So it's no. so the if the sun's radiation is pressure pushing the tail, then it will actually precede the comet when it's on its way out. Correct. So comets go in head first and go out tail first. Wow. Kind of like me having an argument with my wife. No, it's hell. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to get a sense of which way the tail would point when you're looking for it this last week of January near the uh, in and around and near the North Star, remind yourself where the sun is. Uh huh. Okay. Or had set. And then. The tail would be pointing in the opposite direction of that. If you want to see what that's, oh, that's so um, cool. What that does. So, so that's I just just the highlights of it. So it may be visible to the unaided eye if you have good binoculars. Um, and, and, and by the way, if you there's there are websites that you can go to that show you exactly. We can't do this in an explainer, but show you exactly where it is relative to the Big Dipper and the North Star each day. Okay, because it's moving fast, but it's not moving so fast that. Oh, I just missed it. Oh my gosh, it whizzed by. Right, exactly. People think a comet is, oh, I missed it this last minute. Right. No, it's that's, there for that's days. That's a meteor. <laughs> it, it, that, that would be a meteor. That it's would there be a for meteor. Days, right. Inching its way across the sky against the rest uh, of the So stars. basically, this is not as big a story as these people are making it out to be. I'd, I, I'm uh, skeptical uh, that it'll, uh, it'll even be visible to the unaided eye. And I, what the, I, I'd be delighted if it were. But I would, I just want to temper your expectations. So what the headline should say is, newly discovered comet, much like a Lauren Hill or a Guns N' Roses concert. You might see it, you might not. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are two, 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 two musical acts that were notorious for selling tickets and then just not going on. This is Guns N' Roses from the 1980s. Eight. Is that correct? Was it the 80s? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, uh, they were the 90s. No, when was their last album? It I don't know. This century. I don't think it was. No, it was wasn't this century. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, so audience, that joke from Chuck was for a particular age demographic. Come on now, <laughs> you gotta know Guns N' Roses. Oh, <laughs> how could you not? <laughs> A I just saw slash. I just saw slash in a commercial yesterday. <laughs> yes, you did. Okay. Okay. Come a on. A little patience. Yes. Welcome to the jungle, people. Yeah. yeah. All right. Where where com right. where comets may or may not show up. <laughs> <laughs> I can guarantee the comet's not going to be like. Oh my gosh, let me put on my shades. That is not going to happen. <laughs> All right. But if you heard about it, now you know where the green comes from. And there are a couple of other sources of green, but cyanogen is a good one. And cyanogen is a C and an N, carbon and nitrogen, two very common ingredients across the universe. Wow. And the good thing, the interesting thing about comets is that nobody's been messing with the comet. It spends most of his life halfway across to the nearest stars. And so, 
if you if you retrieve a sample of comet, you will see the the, the birth ingredients of the solar system itself. Wow. That's why the study of comets is so important among those who study oh the solar God, system. Oh my God, they're they're like space fossils. Yes. 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 So cool. That yes. is so cool. So we got to wrap it there, Chuck. All right. Damn it. This was good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the green comet. <laughs> the green comet. <laughs> and if someone's selling you comic pills, no, no. And better yet, if somebody has a common umbrella, they're calling you an idiot. <laughs> 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 now, if they're trying to sell you the umbrella, they think you're an idiot. You're right, right, exactly. <laughs> you got it. All right, there it is, Comet in the Skies. Neil deGrasse Tyson here. Thanks, Chuck, for being there. Always a pleasure. All right. Uh, as always, keep looking up. There might be a comic there. <laughs>